Welcome to our midweek study on Exodus. The last time we were together, we looked at the overview of the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. And we said that each word or each commandment gives us a glimpse of God as each word or each commandment shows a character or two of God. Let, let us review them. In the first commandment, we saw that it teaches that our God is a jealous God. He will not share His glory with another. The second commandment, we saw that God's jealousy and supremacy is highlighted, saying that there should be no other gods and we should not be creating for ourselves graven images. You are never to bow down to any other god because Yahweh is a jealous God. In the third commandment, we saw that God names Himself. It's God naming Himself. Kasi di ba sabi natin, we did not name ourselves. Other people, our parents gave our names to us. And here, it's highlighting the supremacy and the authority and dominion and the power of God. And to take His name in vain is to not just simply speak of God's name. It speaks of God's weight, His character, right? The fourth commandment. We, we saw that he, he is a working and a resting God. He is creator God. He is sovereign God. He is eternal God. And He is redeeming God. So, nakit natin, di po ba? It's not just talking about the Sabbath. It's showing us a character or two of God. The fifth commandment. We, 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 we learn of His authority. We learn about His provision. Right? Why? Because we saw there that as He is the supreme authority, He is now giving us authority over us, our parents. And to, to obey them and to submit to them, we see the provision of long life. In the sixth commandment, we, we saw that it highlights that God is the giver of life. He alone gives life and He alone has the authority to take away life. The seventh commandment, it reminds us of the faithfulness of God. Diba? It's pointing to adultery, but it's actually su supremely and ultimately pointing to disobedience to a faithful God, a holy God. The Eighth Commandment. To not steal is to um, trust in God who is the provider. It highlights God being the provider. The Ninth Commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. It speaks of God's truthfulness, His faithfulness, that God is um, truth, right? The Tenth Commandment, we shall not covet, teaches us that God's, uh, God is faithful, God is good, and God is provider. Therefore, we need, we need not worry about His provision and we de need not desire other people's stuff. Yan yung ating pinag-aralan by way of overview. We saw that in the Ten Commandments, each of the commandments highlights a character or in an attribute of God. As we continue our study on Exodus, we now would be looking at each word, each commandment. Today, we'll be looking at the first word. So grab your Bibles, open your Bible apps, and go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. But let us start with verse 1 to look at the whole context. Exodus 20 verse 1 to 3. Are you there? Exodus 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. The first word. Shall we pray? Loving God, as we ponder upon your first word, your first commandment, we pray that you'd open our hearts lead our thoughts, guide our um, study tonight. And we pray that you would see new things about this old commandment. We pray that you would bring to light, Lord, truths that we can glean on and that we could embrace, that we could be found, Lord, as a people who has no other gods who, who love you and, and just honor you, no one else. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to your people and 
Pray to our hearts. This is our heart's cry in Christ's name. Amen and Amen. These are the first word, words that God himself inscribed in those tablets. The tablets of stone. Nalala yung setting? This happened at the foot of Mount Sinai. Just before Moses ascends to the mountain to commune with God and receive the entire Mosaic Code. The whole congreg congregation of Israel, remember, sabi natin, more or less, mga 2 million yata sila, but a lot of people on the foot of the mountain, and they were prepared to hear from God. And listen, what they heard, what we see in Exodus 20 is, the, is that the whole congregation was hearing God's voice. They heard God's voice giving these commandments and, and everyone could hear it, hindi lang si Moses. It wasn't just a voice, in fact, there were thunder, there were lightning, ba? thick clouds, and the whole earth shook. Now, when we read that casually, diba? it doesn't seem like a big deal. But let me take you now to, to Exodus 19, verse 18. Looking at the, the setting, Exodus 19, 18. Now, when all the people saw the, thun the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled and they stood far off and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen to you. Do not let God speak to us lest we die. So it's hindi lang casual na pagbasa natin, nakita natin, uy, wala namang kaso yun eh. No, this is a very terrifying experience for the people that led them to say, we don't want to talk to God anymore. We don't want to hear uh, God's voice anymore. Moses, ikaw na lang makipag sa kanya. And we will listen to you. They beg Moses to speak to God. And then they would just listen to, to Moses as Moses relays to them what Moses heard. Very traumatic ito, mga kapatid. The trauma of hearing God's voice was just too much for them. That is why, after the first commandments were given to the nation verbally, di ba, yung pangitain sa chapter 20, Moses went up to the mountain alone. And when he came back, he had the tablets with the words of these commandments inscribed in stone by the finger of God himself. It was very ter terrifying for the nation. Tinan niyo ulit yung, yung Exodus 19. <clears throat> the, the, the whole mountain trembled greatly. Hindi lang siya uh, um, malakas na ano? Na uh, what, what you call this? Kulog at kidlat, di ba? ang buong mountain. So this scene was very terrifying and it was very deliberate. What did I say? So it was to underscore what was happening and to whom the nation was speaking to and what his intentions were in speaking to them. Kaya makit na sa verse 20, Moho said to the people, Do not fear. For God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. The people stood afar, far off, while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Very interestingly, nakit natin yung context. Nasa paanan ng bundok ang mga Israelita. They are hearing God's voice. Hindi lang napapakinggan ang tinig ng Diyos. Nakikita nila ang pangitain kasama ng tinig ng Diyos. Right? Uh, there was lightning, there was uh, uh, thunder, there was roaring, there was thick uh, cloud as if like smoke from a furnace. Right? And then, sabi natin, talaga nakakatakot yun. But did you hear what Moses said? Moses said, do not fear. And yet, sabi niya ganito, that you should fear him. Teka lang, is this contradictory? Moses sabi mo, wag matakot. Tapos sabi mo, sabi mo bigla, para, matakot kayo. Hindi siya contradiction, friends. This is talking about two kinds of fear. One is the cowardly fear 
yung 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 fear na nagdudulot sa iyo na tumakbo at magtago sa subject of fear. This is the cowardly fear that makes you run and, and 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 hate the subject of your fear. And in that sense, they ought not to fear. Okay, matakot ng ganun. They shouldn't turn away and not be repulsed by by it. The other fear in this verse is the healthy kind of fear. It is the fear of God. It is fear that recognizes the majesty and glory of God. And, and as you understand that, you tremble at His presence. At acknowledging God's right to judge, acknowledging our own sinfulness, confessing that we deserve to be judged. It is a fear that provokes a desire for holiness when you are face to face with a God who is terrifyingly awesome who is three times holy. Itong klaseng takot na ito ang nagdudulot sa atin para wag magkasala. This kind of fear is powerful deterrent to sin. That is why Moses said, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of Him may be before you, that you may not sin. And while Moses drew near into that thick darkness, the people drew back, stood afar off, tiba. Right? That is why the Ten Commandments then were delivered first in the hearing of the people. But the rest of the law, si Moses lamang ang kinausap ng Panginoong Diyos. And Moses then delivered the rest of the law to Israel as somewhat their mediator before, before God. Ito naman ang gusto nila, di ba? Ayaw nilang mapakinggan ang tinig ng Diyos dahil nakakatakot. That is what they ask for. Now, I know we're going ahead of ourselves, but I want you to see the whole story. We all know the story, di ba? Alam natin while Moses was up on the mountain receiving the rest of the law, receiving the rest of the commandment, anong ginagawa ng Israelites sa paanan ng mountain? Where They were immediately breaking the first and second commandment by making a graven image and worshiping it. Yung sense of fear nila kanina that they had before evidently disappeared quickly when they got bored while waiting for Moses. And so, in a fit of religious fervor, oh, teka lang, wala si Moses, di ba? Gusto kong magpuri, gusto kong sumamba. They made the golden calf and named it Jehovah. And sadly, if you would look at the text, uh, we would see uh, uh, as we go on in the future, they dance naked before the idol in what they figure as an act of worship. And so this is a shocking picture telling us as we open the first commandment, as we study the first commandment, telling us how strongly the human heart is bent in breaking the law of God. And don't be too quick in condemning the Israelites. Because we have the same problem. Because we are the same way. This is the natural bent of our frail heart. Diba? When we hear preachings and teachings about uh, loving God, we feel uh, uh, um, sentimental about it. But, but, pero pagkatapos nun, parang nawawala na. We hear preachings of, of uh, um, God being the supreme authority that God's word is is our mandate. And then after that, paglabas natin, parang nawawala na. Right? This is the natural bent of our frail heart. And as we would see today, we don't have to create for ourselves graven images to see that we are disobeying this commandment. Now, I know this is a long introduction because pagbigay niya ako, isang verse na lang titignan natin ngayon eh. When we, when we are asked about the Exodus experience, ano sabihin niyo? Pag tinanong kayo, ano, what was the Exodus for? Ano yung answer niyo? Alam niyo, ito yung parte ng pagtuturo at pangaral na sana andito kayo. Para nakikita ko yung mga reaction niyo kasi nagtatanong ako sa inyo eh. Right? If we, we, if you will be asked, what was the Exodus for? 
right? Kung kayo ikap kagaya ko nung ako bata pa sa pananampalataya, when I was younger in the faith, whenever I read the Exodus account, I would often go to the repeated words in the first few chapters, di ba? Ano yung per plague nga, di ba? In fact, before the plague, in every plague, we would hear the phrase, Let my people go. Moho saying to the Pharaoh as God's mouthpiece. And then I right away say, Oh, this is to liberate Israel from slavery from Egypt. Diba? This is uh, uh, freedom. This was to set them free. Is that how you understood the Exodus as well? That is true, but not completely true. Because all throughout the plagues, we would read, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So it's not setting them free so that they can do whatever the heck they want. Technically, technically, it's transfer of slavery to Egypt, uh, from Egypt to slavery to Yahweh. And so when we look at the Ten Commandments, right? When we look at the Ten Words, these are commandments from a master to his slaves. It requires obedience. It's not just a checklist that you, you fulfill. Check mo lang, right? Uh, one commandment at a time. No, this is fulfilling them all at the same time. From a master to his slave. Now, let us go now to the first commandment. And let's do some observation. Notice the commandment have its spiritual and historical implications spiritual and historical context let's go to verse 2 first i am the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt out of the house of slavery you shall have no other gods before me a new spiritual context what is the spiritual implication spiritual history nitong uh utos nito the spiritual context is, I am the Lord your God. And it's telling us who this commandment is from. It's from Yahweh. Napansin yun? All caps, Lord. The ever-existing one, the one who honors his covenant, the faithful one, Yahweh. I am Yahweh, your God, Elohim. The Supreme God, the creator of the universe. So this is who it's from. This is the, the spiritual context, the historical context. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. This is telling us what the Lord has done. He, this is who I am. This is what I've done. Here is now what you ought to do. Right? Kagaya ng diniscuss natin ng last week, we can categorize the Ten Commandments into two. The first four is the vertical uh, commandment, commandment uh, with regards to our relationship with God. The, the, the fifth to the tenth commandment is the, are the horizontal commandments. They, they are the, the commandments with regards to our relationship with our fellow uh, men. And these are very important reminders as we go to the very first commandment. So, you also need to know that as you look at the commandments, starting with the first command, napaka-general, di ba? It seems very general. You shall have no other God before me. I was thinking about, about like, give me specifics. How does it look like? And it's done on purpose. It was done on purpose. Para saan? Para mak very general siya na thing. So, uh, uh, so that when we go to Deuteronomy, Lord willing, in two years' time, pag hindi pa no? We would see that Deuteronomy's account on the commandments are actually expansions, expositions of the Ten Commandments in Exodus. Deuteronomy amplifies for us Exodus 20, right? Kagaya nung sinabi na ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his 
heart. Jesus was saying, there is more to the commandment than simply obeying them outwardly. There is the matter of the heart. Okay? So, dapat natin maunawaan yun. As we look at each commandment, they are seem to be very general. Because there are expansions to the commandment. And we would see that in Deuteronomy 12 to 26. Right? Another observation that we need to take into consideration is the... Look at your Bibles. Look at the uh, um, commandment. You shall... You shall not you shall have no other gods before me. Napansin niyo yung pronoun na you? It's in not is it is actually not in the plural. This pronoun you is singular. It is you, every one of you. It is you, every individual. Why is this important to mention? Because it would be easy for Israel to say that this is a commandment for the nation as a whole. And take it as if the majority are doing it, then we're okay if we're not doing it. Or, pwede na sabihin, ah, this is addressed to us as a nation. Therefore, this should be, uh, uh, this should bear more weight on our leader Moses. Dapat si Moses ang mag nito. At pag in ni Moses to, then we're okay. No, it is addressed, listen, to each individual, personally, singularly. Bear that in mind as we go to each command. Now we go to the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. So English, it may, may it poses a problem. Kasi yung phrase na before me, The before me phrase makes it seem that you can have other gods as long as God is the first and the priority. Diba? It would seem like, oh, oh okay lang pala na ano eh, may ibang Diyos. Kasi, for example, if you're a Japanese, if you're someone from, like, Pilipino, kunyari, galing ka sa uh, mga tribo, uh, sasabi mo, ah, pwede naman palang hindi ko it itatwa, hindi ko itakwil itong other gods as long as God is the first. Kasi that, that's what I read. You shall have no other gods before me. Right? Hindi yan ang intention. And again, that is an unfortunate translation in English. But idea is, you shall have no other gods. Before me, here means in my face or equal with me or on the same level. Remember John 1 verse 1? What does it say? Tawag kaya ako sa inyo, magbabasa. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That word with. In John, is the same Greek word that was used in the Septuagint. Yung Septuagint po, yun yung po yung Greek translation ng Old Testament. Does the word with in John 1 1 is the same word with that was used in Exodus 20 verse 3 for before me? It means the same. So this is telling us that there are no other gods. Walang ibang Dios. What does this mean? We don't give any other entity what belongs to God. Whether there is no, there is another God that we make up or build, we should not give to them what belongs to God. It can be another person or something. We will discuss that later on practically. Let's look at biblically. There is no, you shall have no other gods before me. Telling us that there is really no other God. We must have no other. Telling us, itong first commandment is telling us atheism is not true. Because it's telling us there is a God. And now, it's telling us that polytheism or henotheism is not true as well. There is a God and Yahweh is that God. Jehovah is that God. Right? May ibang mga tao, the Persians worship the sun. We saw the Egyptians, they worship a lot of gods. 
right? But the Bible says there is no other than the true God. Deuteronomy 4, 39. Know therefore today and lay it to your heart that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no other. Wala nang iba. Pumunta ka sa langit, pumunta ka sa lupa. The, in all creation, in all the universe, there is no one else. It's only God. God has His being of Himself. Right? As Creator, I am the Lord, Yahweh, your God, Elohim, Creator, telling us He is the first cause. He created everything. Right? And all, all other beings depend upon Him. This also telling us there's only one omnipotent power. Kasi isipin nyo, kung may dalawang omnipotent power, magkakaroon ng competition, hindi ba? Right? For example, you have, you are in a pilot. Ay, you are in a pilot. You are in an airplane. You have two pilots. And di ba, lagi may main pilot, ca- captain, sa may co-pilot. What if both are captains? Di ba? One would go to the right, and then the other would go to the left. They would be opposing. There would be confusion. And the plane would perish. The order and harmony in the world, the constant and uniform government of all things, is a clear argument that there is but one omnipotent being, one God who rules all. And we know, uh, uh, as we look at the the whole spectrum, the, the whole counsel of God, that one God is in three persons, Father, Son, and the Spirit. Isaiah 44, verse 6. I am the first and I am the last. There is no God besides me. What does it mean to have no other gods? We must have no other gods. Therefore, we must have no other. There is no other God. You shall have no other gods before me. This commandment is also telling us that we should not uh, uh, serve false god. And mix it up with serving the true God. Listen to these passages, Jeremiah 2, 26 to 28. As a thief is ashamed when caught, so the house of Israel shall be shamed. They, their kings, their officials, their priests, and their prophets, who say to a tree, you are my father. You see what's going on here? Who say to a tree, you are my father. To a stone, you gave me birth. Sinasabi ng, ng, ng talata, sinasabi ng Jeremiah, uh, nakakahiya kayo. Kung paano nakakahiya ang magnanakaw pag nahuli. Nakakahiya ang Israel because you are caught. Because your kings, your officials, your priests, your prophets would say to a tree, you are my father. You would say to a stone, you gave me birth. You see what's happening here. They are creating for them, themselves other gods. For they have turned their back to me and not their face. As you worship other gods, it's turning back your eyes, your face on God. But in the time of their trouble, they say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods that you you, you made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you in your time of trouble. For as many as your cities are your gods, O Judah. This commandment is forbidding us to, to be joining uh, um, to be worshipping, to be serving, to be submitting to, and mixing our worship with the true God, with false gods. Napansin nyo, sabi nila, kayo ang aming father, kayo ang creator. Sino ba ang father nila? Pinapatungkulan nila ang si Yahweh. Remember? Yung ginawa ng mga Israelita na golden calf. Diba? Who did they, who, what did they call them? It. It. This is Yahweh. This is Jehovah. They are worshiping the true God. Kaso iba ang pinapatungkulan nila. They know, they have a concept of who they're uh, um, worshiping, but they're doing it the wrong way. Right? They're worshiping the true God in the wrong manner. And we will see that later as we go on with the second commandment next week. To, to not have for ourselves graven images. Again, this commandment, the first commandment, forbids us to uh, 
mix up the, uh, our service for the true God with the false gods. This is forbidden in the commandment. We must adhere to the true God and no other. Bakit? God is a jealous God. And He will endure no rival. Diba? It's unlawful. Uh, it's diba? unlawful for a wife to have two husbands at once. Diba? And we cannot have two gods. Exodus 34 verse 14. You shall not worship any other god for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. God does not want His people to even make mention of other gods and idols. Exodus 23 13. Do not mention the name of other gods nor let them be heard from your mouth. You see, it is detestable to God. Napakadaling istignan. You shall have no other gods. But we see the implications. How God is so jealous for His, His glory. God looks upon going after other gods as breaking the marriage covenant. Diba? Exodus 32 verse 7. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down at once for your people, whom you brought up from the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. It's corruption of ourselves. Right? It's hurting ourselves. To go after other gods is what God cannot bear. It makes him furious. Very important to sa Panginoon Diyos that he was very serious about the consequences to the Israelites if they pursue or promote other gods. Listen to Deuteronomy 13. Sabi natin, di ba? Deuteronomy is the expansion of Exodus 20's take on the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy 13, verse 6, If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife you embrace, or your friend who is as your own soul entices you secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, some of the gods of the peoples who are around you, whether near you or far off from you, from the one end of the earth to the other, you shall not yield to him or listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him, nor, nor shall you conceal him, but you shall kill him. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Sabi rito, ang sino mang magyakag, magyaya, mag-influence sa Israelites to go after other gods should be put to death. Ganon ka seryoso ang Panginoon Diyos. As we read in Exodus 20 verse 3, parang, oh, okay, but we see as we ex look at other passages, as, as God expands that for us, expounds that for us, we know what it means now. And we cannot fully exhaust that. Not, not today. What does it mean to have other gods beside the true God? It means we should not give our adoration to any other. We do not give our ultimate trust to any other. Of course, we trust people on a human level, but ultimate trust, we should not be giving that out to any other. But, but, but God and God alone, we do not give our invocations to any other God. What do you mean by that? Prayers, petitions, please. Now, bear with me for a while. This might hurt a bit. Especially to those who are just watching this, and you may be from the predominant faith in this country. Some would say, we're not worshipping the images, the pictures, di ba? The, the yung mga ribulto. But again, if you are praying to it, if you're trusting it, if you're uh, uh, saying your petitions and please your invocations, towards it, then you are worshipping it. Then that is your God. Because you should not be giving your invocations to any other but God. We do not give our thanksgiving to any other. Of course, on a human level, we are grateful to people who are kind to us. Diba? But ultimately, we should not be giving any thanksgiving at all to anyone else but God because we know that everything comes from the Lord. Now, this will hurt again. And I, I mean you well. Some would go 
to uh, um, the church perhaps. Magtitirik na kandila ng pasasalamat. Hindi po ba? Oh, man, that is detestable to the Lord. You only thank the Lord. You shall have no other gods before me. It means that you should thank no one else but ultimately, but God. We don't give our spiritual obedience to any other but God and God alone. Again, this is how it looks like practically. Now, if you turn to Matthew 22, we would hear Jesus saying, Verse 34, let's start with verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Verse 36, Teacher, referring to Jesus, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, listen, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first, this is the great and first commandment. In Matthew 22, Jesus was quoting Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And he says that that is the first commandment. What is the first commandment in Exodus 20? You shall have no other gods before me. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first, this is the great and first commandment. The commandment in Exodus 20 to have no other gods but Yahweh, according to Jesus, to love Him with all that we are. Do you love God? Do you have other gods? Oops, sorry. Do you have other gods? Talaga wala. Do you love God with all that you are? Totoo ba? Well, Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do you? obey his commandments you see this is why we say that at, at casual glance it, it would seem like um napaka trivial lang. but as we look deeper into it as we look at the expansions in deuteronomy how god jesus christ used it we see that it's more than that that's why i ask you again do you have other gods? It can be you. It can be our family. It can be our profession. It can be ministry. Right? So, we need to pause for a while and, and think about these questions. Because we may not be bowing down to graven images. We may be calling upon Yahweh or Jesus Christ or, or, or the one true God but if we assess our hearts do we really love Jesus? do we really love God? do we keep His commandments? do we trust in Him? or do we trust in ourselves in our wisdom in our own righteousness Maybe we are trusting in our wealth. Maybe we're trusting in our, our gifts. Nagdeserve naman ako. Friends, this is very thought provoking, di po ba? So, again, the first commandment, dito palamang, is telling us that it's really impossible for us to keep the commandments. Thus, we need a Savior. Thus, we need someone who kept the commandment perfectly without blemish for us and put your trust in Him. Nasa first commandment pa lang po tayo. Pag pumalya ka sa first commandment, the rest of the commandment would fail. If you don't have only God in your heart, if you don't just love Him, then chances are you would have idols in your lives. And idols doesn't necessarily mean just the, the statues. Anything or anyone that takes the place of God is an idol. Then you would take the Lord's name in vain.
then you would not uh, um, honor the one day that God has assigned for you to worship Him. If you fail in the first four with regards to your relationship with God, then you would fail in the other six uh, as regards to your relationship with men. Sabi ni Paul, the commandments are but tutors guiding us towards Jesus Christ. And for us who are saved by God's grace, we love Him. We, we love God. We are given new hearts and new disposition. Thus, we obey His commandments. Not perfectly, diba? but uh, um, incorruptibly. Meaning that that is our intention, that is our disposition. But because we are in our frail bodies, that is our bent. Hindi na kagayan dati. Paano nangyari yun? We love Him because He first loved us. The Gospel. There's grace in the commandment. Right? Again, th this is just wonderful. And I'd like to end with this. Do you love God? Do you serve any other gods? Do you have other gods? Do you keep His commandments? I pray that our answer in those questions are affirmative. Hindi dahil sa ating sarili kayanan, but because of the beauty of the gospel that changed us from within. It changed our very nature. We love Him because He first loved us. We obey His commandments because they're not burdensome. It's a joy for us. And when we fall, we know we can go back because we are hurt. We, we, we are crushed when we hurt this God who, who loves us, this God who saved us, this God who is all-powerful and all-loving. And then we turn back to Him again in repentant faith. The first word, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Beautiful commandment. Beautiful words. Next week, we'll be looking at the second word, the second commandment. And I hope you uh, can still join me. Again, we can never exhaust the, the word of God. Uh, there's so much more that I want to say. But for the sake of time, we'll end here. But yeah um i'll see you all next week and um always remember diba, sa ating pag -aaral, the, the exodus account on the commandments are expanded explained uh in exposit sa deuteronomy and we would see implications in the new testament as well and, and, and as with the rest of scripture right i pray that i can uh, you can still join me next week for our next study. Salamat sa Dios, and shall we pray? Lord, thank you for teaching us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, and we pray that we indeed have been um, challenged if uh, we have other gods in our hearts, in our lives. We may be saying your name, but in our heart of hearts, we may be worshiping in the wrong way. We may be trusting in ourselves, trusting in other things other than you. Lord, napaka comforting po ng salatang ito. Especially now in the pandemic that we all live in. If you're the only true God, therefore we can only cry out to you because you are the one who cares for us. We've seen the implications. We've seen this is who you are, the faithful one, the almighty one. This is what you did. You have, in, in the life of the Israelites, you have saved them. In our lives, Lord, you have given us life, given us faith, saved us, transferred us from darkness into light, death to life. Therefore, we should hear you. We should go, obey you. We should not have any other gods before you. We should just present our petitions, our invocations towards you because you are faithful is your all powerful. Kaya okay, Panginoon Dios sa uh, pinagdadaanan namin ngayon, we pray that you would 
be our comfort, our source of comfort, as we all go through this pandemic. We pray that um, we would trust you, we would rest in you as a refuge, and we pray that you give us that peace and confidence that transcends all understanding, because you are God, and there's no other. And we love you because you first loved us. We obey you by your grace through the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thus, there's nothing to be afraid of. Salamat na maray sa pagtuturo niyo po, Panginoon Diyos, and we pray that you'd bring us back next week as we study the second word. In Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you po sa pagsamay sa akin. God bless you. Bye.